Kubor Kabati C TV. Lawan Rashapi Daka Frank Motors. I am Tata Punch. Price starting at 5.80 lakhs. Ringkat Bakanet Foodish. Or Dharma Pi, Nin Wan Ramani, Hakir Dob Ying Jong Pi. Ke John Roberts Theological College Mauklot hakas ngisak jalan ke Arpu Lai Terik Ubenai Naitung Arajar Arpu Ar Kala rakhi kin mau buram yakin lingkuk sengiyap ke Beshispa Khat Sansnem Jong Reverend Dr. John Roberts Ubalong Ukpa Jong Kidak Tho Khasi Hakani ke sengi ke Professor Esther Sim Kepada ke Nong Hikai Jong ke English Department ke School Ba North Eastern Hills University Kala ai jingkren halor ke pang Voices of Resistance Literature in English from North East India. Shwa kani President Jonga Governing Body Reverend C S M, Principal Reverend Dr B L S M, ka Professor S T S M, but uba P Karshieng uba Mikmat yaka Kasi Auto Society lembat kiwe kiwe kibala shakot snobha kila leg bo sinteo hakmat udormat jong Reverend Dr John Roberts uba dan ha plow jong kani ka jaka puli. He will rejoice and be glad in him. This is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made. You are a God, we will praise your name. We will praise your name. We will give thanks, we will give thanks for your faithfulness, for your faithfulness. In the paths of the wicked, lie thorns and snares but he who guards his soul stays far from them trained a child in the way he should go and when he is old he will not turn from it the rich rule over the poor in the borrower is servant to the lender he who sows wickedness reaps trouble and the root of his fury will be destroyed a generous man will himself be blessed, for he shares his food with the poor. Shall we look to the God in prayer? Dear Lord, we want to thank you and praise you for this wonderful time, this wonderful day. We want to thank you for your faithfulness and at this very moment, we pray and we come to you seeking your wisdom and your presence in our midst as we begin this day, as we begin this program. Help us to have a meaningful time of engagement and learning from one another. We pray for the life, the work, and the contribution of your great servant, John Roberts. We thank you and praise you for all the great legacy that he lived amongst us today. May this continue to inspire us to be more diligent and to be more faithful to you. Lord, help us and allow us to grow more closer as a family and, and nurture the bones of the community. Continue to remind us that all that we do here today, all that we accomplish is for the pursuit of truth, for the greater glory of you and for the humanity as well. It is a very significant day, not only for the history of this college, but for the Kasi Chantia community as a whole, if we recall and counted all the contribution that he has made to the church and to the society at large. Reverend Dr. John Robert was born on the 16th of February 1842 in one village known as Upper Kauris in Marinetshire, Wales in the United Kingdom. He is the beloved son of, Reverend, of Mr. Richard Roberts and Jane Roberts. But it was in the year 1871 that he landed in this beautiful hill and he started his ministry from the beautiful village on the foot of these castle hills and that is in Shela. And in the year 18 and in the year 1872, he was asked, or uh, he was transferred from Shela and was asked to be the principal of the normal school 
which is known today as the Chera Teachers Training School in Chera. And later on, considering the needs and the demands prevailing at that time for the growth and development of the church and the educations in the hills, he was also appointed as the first principal of this John Robert Theological College, known formerly as the Chera Theological Institutions in the year 1887. Little bit about the commitment and the personality of this man. When I read the application form of Mr. Reverend John Roberts, when he applied for the to be a missionary, uh, to be a missionary of the Welsh Calvinistic Methodist Church, he was asked to fill one column or to answer one question. And one of the questions is why do you want to be a missionary? And his answer was, what Jesus Christ did for me is worth doing something that will amount to sacrifice for his sakes. So what we see here is he counted the life and sacrifice of Jesus as something to be followed. And he did just that through his life and service to the church and society in Kasi Jangales. The next question he was asked is, what are the quality that a missionary should have? And he filled in that form, in this, uh, in this uh, beautiful word, he said, they should, be, they should have the perseverance, good common sense, full faith in his work, and having as his sole objective to the glory of his saviors. So we see that this word got translated in reality through his life and activities. Because when we read and study the life and history of John Roberts, we see that he did not spare any part of his life and energy doing all what he can for the well-being of the church and for the well-being of the society at large in the Kasi and Jainte Hills. So once he was here in these hills and start his journey as the humble servant of Christ, he played a very critical role in the promotion of education. So in his early periods, as the principal of the normal school in, in Chirapwanji, he is engaged in the training of teachers. And these teachers, which graduated from this school, went across the hills and valley of these hills and they were among the pioneers, the pioneers of education in Kasi Tang Hills. They are among the first teacher, first part of teachers who goes to different villages in the hills and valleys of Kasi Tang Hills. But apart from that, we are very happy to know and to state that one of his major contributions is in the field of literature. The Kasi Bible, which was considered as the basic foundations of the Kasi literature, is a living testimony of the commitment and the energy invested by this great man, the Reverend John Roberts. Not only he was engaged or entrusted in the revisions of the New Testaments, but he was responsible as the editor to see the completion of the translation of the Old Testament. The Old Testament, as we have now, was completed in the year 1891. It was printed in three volumes. And these three volumes, we are sorry to state that not all the volumes are available here with us. But one or two other volumes are with us, and we are still in the process of looking for the remaining volumes and will be uh, trying to recover those volumes and kept in our archive uh, for the sake of our research scholar, student and also to commemorate his memory. These volumes are available now actually in the archives of the Cambridge University, so also in the archive of the Yale University and I have the privilege of consulting 
these uh, these first edition the first editions of the Kasi Bible and we could see there the literary expertise of him and so also of other personality and person involved in the translations of the Kasi Bible but apart from that he also contributed to various aspects of the literatures during his life, either as a principal of the normal school or as a principal of the Chera Theological College, he was engaged in the publications of three readers, the Kasi second reader, the Kasi third reader, and the Kasi fourth readers. And these are among the most significant publications in the history of Kasi literature. Because it was in these readers that you found the first seeds in the study of in the Kasi poetry, the Kasi drama, the novelettes, and many aspects of Kasi literatures. He is the pioneer, including the seeds of many aspects of Kasi literatures, either, either in the form of dramas, either in prose, either in short poetries, uh, and many other literary genres. So for that, for all the contribution that he has made to the growth and development of the Kasi literatures, the academic communities, and much more in the person of none other but the Professor R. S. Lingdor. When he made an assessment of his life and his contributions, he cannot help but declare that John Robert is the father of Kasi literatures.
and it is bound by the aesthetic imagination. Its emergence may be traced back to writers who were educated, which meant that they could read and write, mostly town or city based, whose identities were linked to the stories that their ancestors told them. I think you can make the connection. They attempted to transcribe their own ethnic oralities, oralities that were never intended to fit the written. Hence, in this talk, when we speak about literature in English from Northeast India, I would like to differentiate between the existence of two literatures with different origins found within Northeast India itself, before I talk about what exactly constitutes literatures from Northeast India. More or less, I quote here, gone through a process of Sanskritization, though not fully immersed in it. Close quote. This literature that has emerged from these literate communities share a similar evolutionary trajectory as the other literatures in the rest of the country. They have published literary histories that reflect upon the growth, progress, and maturity of their respective literatures. Temsala Aur, award-winning poet and writer of short fiction from Nagaland, puts it this way, open quotes, while the states of Assam, Manipur, and Tripura boast of long and illustrious literary traditions, the other states came to grips with the written word, that is, Meghalaya, uh, Kasi Hills, Kasi Hills uh, Mizoram, Nagaland, the other states came to grips with the written word only a little over a century ago. Close quotes. In the literature that comes from the hill communities of this region, the oral dimension or the oral tradition has been the primary agency for articulations, engagements, and interventions. I quote Tilotama Mishra, the Assamese critic and writer, on this. In the changed circumstances, when the indigenous people of the region are challenging the grand narrative of the nation, and positing the shared memories of their own communities as the intrinsic part of the national memory. That's why the song Rikasi Rikasi made such an impact on me. The focus of the contemporary writers has, shift, has shifted from the written to the oral as the repertoire of that legacy which they wish to cherish as their unique cultural heritage. It is this literature that I wish to speak about here where the oral legacy brings many of these writers together in a common pursuit, that of transcribing an oral past and an indigenous identity in a language, English, that is accessible to all. Hence, Temsura Aung's poem, History, resonates with new words of discernment in order to increase our understanding of the lore of our essential core. This means the attempt to reread the past. History for these writers constitutes new in inroads that have to be made into the past. For these writers, re-entry into the past after the intervention of colonialism into their own native histories would involve new formulations and fresh perspectives. Given that many indigenous groups from Northeast India joined India after 1947, also shows us that this frontier region that was deemed as the excluded or semi-excluded tracts was a zone that was quantifiably unknown, historically unredeemed as it were, because it existed on the edge of India's unfolding history. But the fact remains that the colonial legacy in the form of the English language has done more to link these communities together than any other language. In stating this, I would like to, my, to work my, my way towards an understanding of the writer's usage of English as a tool to construct identity as well as to deconstruct the existing grand narratives of history. But first we need to understand what happened when the oral paradigm was dislocated. I think all of us can make a connection with this. You know, the death of the oral tradition. The generation that initially suffered this loss may never have been aware of the long-term setbacks that this would cause to society in general. But as literary history, whether, docu whether documented or undocumented, tells us, and I take the case of Kasi literature here, there did exist writers and thinkers who emerged in the early 20th century, like R.S. Lindor, and later O.L. Snaita, Philomena Karakor, among others, who wrote literary compendiums 
that give utmost importance to the oral affiliations of society. For example, chapter one of R. S. Lingo's book, A History of Thoughtatar, Binta Beninkom Patar, sets in motion the foundational discourse of Khasi thought as it begins its language-making process in collusion with nature in the symbolic take from a leaf from which draws breath the unblemished word. I read it in Khasi. Can you reading my yard on Guru Kam Lung Jing Star Khasi? Kalong bal pala shisha. Hai wei 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 sentiu ni idee ni sed ni iplang ikan ba. U Khasi u lapen kam ti bakan long ki long kan show ikan Jing Star barin baja baro. The mystics of knowledge accumulation for the Khasi is truly incredible.